the place up. You know what we made of. Can't get enough of you, blue. I'm a chaser. Face up. Big ass heavy gun. Yeah, well the thing about big ass heavy guns is less recoil. Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title as well as the thumbnail, this is what we are going over here today. This is the Sig Sauer P226 X5 version in the all stainless steel. So the X5 has been around for a while, I think like two decades now. Um, however, it was only made in Germany. It was made over in their custom shop and it was prohibitively expensive. Like if you look to pick up a German made one right now, they're about $5,000. So it's pretty expensive. <laughs> so Sig decided to bring production to New Hampshire and that is what we have here. These have been out for a few months now, probably about four or five months ago, you guys saw a whole bunch of YouTubers uh, making reviews on them. I've actually had mine in the whole time. We've been shooting a ton of rounds through it. We will get to why that is here in a little bit. But what we're gonna do today, of course, first is go over all the details of the pistol, what makes it cool, what I think of it compared to some other offerings, how it's performed, those sorts of things. Just full disclosure, SIG did send this out for the review. Um, but some things that make it different versus other 226s, which we will show you here in just a second. First off, it is all steel frame. So this thing here on my scale, unloaded, comes in just over 45 ounces. So it is not lightweight. When you pick this gun up, it feels fast. So when I first got this thing, I was like, ooh, it just feels like speed. Of course, it also has the optics cut back there. That optics cut is for the SIG series optics. It also works with Delta points. It also works with RMRs, but you do have to use a different screw if you're gonna use the RMRs. Of course, there are a million plates available for it as well. So it is definitely a purpose-driven competition firearm. That said, uh, one thing that some folks may or may not like, and we always leave this to you guys to uh, discuss down below in the comments, is that the sights themselves are not a uh, co-witness for if you're using a red dot. So for example, um, the front sight, which is a fiber optic sight, works here with our adjustable rear. The rear sight there has that square notch, has good serrations on it. Of course, like I said, it's adjustable for the target uh, and the ammo that you are using. We did zero this one here. You guys should see some photos of it rolled in. This is zeroed at 25 yards with Minuteman Munitions 124 grain. And it's basically spot on as you'd expect from a custom shot gun like this. And uh, again, though, if you do add an optic, you do not have the ability to co-witness and you do lose your rear sight. Some folks think that is a bad thing. Over the years, I've said that was a bad thing, but a lot of people in the comments section have said that they don't want co-witness if they're running a red dot on their pistols, which I think is interesting. We'll just leave it at that. But if you guys are one of them, let me know down below in the comments section. But like I said, designed for competitions, that said it is a single action only gun. Optics Ready weighs 45 ounces, so depending on what competition you may be into, it might not actually be legal in the competition division that you are in. So just check that, and you guys probably know more about that than I do, I'm not a big competition shooter. Um, but all steel frame, we have great checkering there on the front strap, and we'll just roll in some photos here as we go along. Comes with three standard capacity 20 round magazines. Basically they are Mechgar 18 round mags with that plus two extension, has that nice uh, color to match the frame. Very nice mag wall there. And the magwell doesn't go all the way around versus some of the other you know, magwells that are out there for competition type guns. And uh, I think that's just because they wanted to give you the ability to strip and rip the magazine uh, should you have a double feed. So it does have this lip here on the magazine. So that way, if you did have a double feed for whatever reason, you can still grab it, get some purchase on it and rip it out. But Mechgar mags are some of the, if not the best pistol mags on the market. And uh, comes with three of them, which certainly is nice. I think any competition gun should come with three. It also comes with a lockable hard case, as well as a challenge coin, as well as a target and some other goodies as well for those of you guys who are into those types of accoutrement. Um, up here on the front, we do have good checkering on there. As you guys can see, it definitely sticks to your hand. There's no doubt about it. Additionally, we have a nice high undercut 
on the frame. And for a SIG 226, you can get very, very high on the frame. Now, of course, that is relative. The SIG 226, the design, which we'll show you some other 226s here in just a second to compare it to, uh, does have a relatively high bore access. And one thing I was concerned with with this pistol is that it does have a five inch uh, barrel. So a five inch barrel has a longer slide than a lot of the 226s. And sometimes in nine millimeter, when you have a longer slide, it tends to feel a little chunky under recoil. However, I will absolutely confirm after having it here for a while with thousands of rounds through it, it absolutely does not feel that way when you actually shoot it. They did a good job at balancing out the weight and the slide does track well for a gun with this bore access. So good job on them for that. The actual grips on it are G10 Piranha grips. Like I said, it sticks to your hand. This gun feels fast, it is fast, and uh, the grips definitely play a good part in that. That said, I have pretty large hands, and you guys can see kind of the space that I have in there to fill everything in. Some of you guys who have small hands may have a harder time with that grip. That said, the trigger is adjustable, which we'll get to here in just a second, which might help you out. Our magazine release there is extended. In general, I am not a fan of extended anything. Um, I tend to bump them accidentally and I'm just not a fan of it because I don't need it for most controls on pistols. That said, in no way did I accidentally actuate that mag release, so um, not mad about it at all personally. Coming up here, we do have an ambidextrous safety. If I'm actually quiet, you guys can hear it is very crisp, very audible. It has good serrations on there, makes it very easy to use. And then continuing on forward there, we do have our slide release and slide lock lever. Now I'm gonna move a little bit like this so you guys can actually see what's happening here. So if we do lock the slide to the rear, it's easy to actuate for that. One thing of note though, is when you do come up here and insert a mag, uh, there's you know different techniques for that one-handed. Obviously you're gonna wanna actuate it with your thumb if you're a right-handed shooter, but that safety does get in the way of it a little bit. It's kind of all bunched up there. It's not ambidextrous as well. That said, my preferred way to do it, assuming you have two hands free for a reload, is to insert your magazine, come up, hit, then extend out. That's my personal uh, preferred way to do it, but uh, some folks there may find that very crowded, particularly if you're used to actuating it with your shooting hands. So just know that going forward. Additionally, since we're talking about controls here on the slide and we'll let you guys see what's going on, uh, this version here with the G10 grips does come with this gas pedal type of takedown lever. If you go with the one that has rosewood grips, it doesn't have the gas pedal on there, but rosewood grips are cool. So it just kind of depends what you want, but what that's for, so that way when you come forward, uh, basically, you can use it as a gas pedal and really drive that slide down under recoil. That said, for me, as you guys can see, my thumb kind of wants to go a little bit further out because I have large hands. So I can get on there, but if it was like, I don't know, three or four millimeters more forward, that'd be preferred for me. That said, it's still better than nothing. It does give you something to latch on to. We'll get up close and personal. We'll go over this trigger. It is a three-way adjustable match trigger. I did not adjust it for this review intentionally just to show you guys what it looks like and how it performs from the factory. That said, I have adjusted my other X5 and I can tell you it gets, it gets very nice. <laughs> um, so there is that trigger guard here has the adjustment points built into it. We do have that one screw hole there as well as the screw hole there to adjust it. And uh, trigger guard is not serrated. So if you're somebody who does that Jerry Michelak type of shooting, um, you don't have anything to really grab onto there on the front of the slide. It's also It also doesn't have an edge like some other 226 models have had over the years. That said, it does have a 1913 rail up front for adding any sort of lights, lasers, etc. that you may want to add on there slide does have forward serrations that said for whatever reason they don't come up onto the top of the slide i know a lot of guys would like that myself included um, but they don't so just know that going forward that said they're very usable as you guys can see there the barrel itself is a bull barrel like we already mentioned five inches in length and for a bull barrel gun it shoots exactly like you would expect it to accuracy on this firearm is Phenomenal, it's excellent. There is absolutely no complaints by me on that one. And then moving back to the rear, rear serrations do come all the way up, very easy to grab onto. And this slide, uh, for several reasons, number one, because it comes out of SIG's custom shop, as well as the fact that it does have full length rails on a steel frame, the slide is like butter. It is like a custom 1911 in terms of how it feels. It just feels like it's perfectly fit because it is. And uh, really just running the slide inspires confidence. I'll tell you that much. Additionally, that helps to smooth out the recoil impulse when you're actually firing it. So I suppose with that, that is a general overview 
preview of it. Let's get up close and personal, go over the trigger and kind of show you how it compares to a couple different uh, 226 options that SIG has made over the years. Before getting into the trigger, of course, we have made sure the pistol is unloaded and you can send the slide home. And a few things to talk about trigger-wise, you can adjust where the trigger shoe here actually sits on the trigger itself. So you can loosen this screw and move it back. So that way, if you have smaller hands and you have a hard time reaching it with this grip, you can move it further back. You can also move it further out. Now, me personally, I would move it a touch out if I was going to do so. That said, again, we left it in the factory configuration for this video. Uh, additionally, you can adjust your over travel as well as your pull weight here. And from the factory, it comes in right at three pounds on my scale, sometimes a little bit lighter, sometimes a little bit more. And again, I didn't mess with it, but you can make this trigger a little bit nicer if you want to. And basically you have this little bit of play here from the factory, and then we're gonna have a slight bit of movement and then a break. Movement, break. And the reset, right there. Tactile, audible, break. And again, very good in terms of feedback from the shooter's perspective. You know when it's going to break. It's not surprising. Same is true there with the reset. You can see from the factory, very, very little over travel. And again, you can actually shorten that up if you want to. And you can also lighten it up if you want to. But the trigger, in my opinion, is phenomenal. One thing to note as well is that you can actually manipulate the slide here with the safety on. I know some guns you can't do that, so I just want to point that out. And then quick disassembly of the pistol. Uh, it's not that much different from most of your other uh, 226s out there. So you can just push this little gas pedal up and then at this point, walk it to the rear, slide it down and take everything off. As you guys can see there, fit and finish, flawless. We do have a feed ramp built into the frame. That said, where the magazines fit and feed from, I'm not sure that's entirely necessary, but it certainly doesn't hurt anything. And then of course we do have our recoil spring, which is sort of a double spring, which is different than some of the 226s. So you guys can see there are two different springs. And then of course, like we talked about the match bull barrel on there, do have that little cutout there for where this piece rides on it. Um, but otherwise just a very, very nice looking barrel overall. Of course we do have the crown on there exactly as you would expect. Looking in the slide, you'll see absolutely no machine marks at all, like you'd expect. And then we have the SIG optics pattern uh, screws there. So you actually remove this from the bottom. I know some folks do ask about that. And one thing that's cool about that is SIG has now, as of when I'm doing this review, uh, released some optics that are fully enclosed that mount with the screws from the bottom, which is cool technology. And I honestly think that there's probably gonna be other pistols that go with that because it's about the most bomb proof type of mounting system I can think of anyway. Um, compared to other offerings out there, but reassembly very simple as you guys can see there And that's it we are reassembled now just to compare it to a few other offerings This gun here is the Sig Sauer Legion. Of course, this is the SAO version as well Full review is up on the channel. This does have a flat trigger. However, a big difference of course is that it has the aluminum frame uh, Totally changes the weight totally changes the recoil impulse uh, of the gun versus of course, our X5 here, uh, fantastic gun though for sure. And uh, the trigger on this one is just different. So a lot more slop, it's loosey goosey compared to this. Now this is still a very good 226 trigger, but compared to this, it's just different. Now the brake's a little bit cleaner in terms of shortness on this one. As you guys can see there, helps if we take our magazine out. Um, and the reset there, Maybe a little bit shorter as well. Both good triggers. That said, I prefer the X5 over the uh, Six Hour Legion. But again, both are phenomenal. You're not going to hear me complain about either. Then we have a more classic SIG here that you guys can see. This one here has, I don't even know how many thousands of rounds through it. Um, but it's your traditional 226. Uh, this, of course, has the decocker there. And then your first round is going to be double action. And you guys can see, even in double action, this thing has lots and lots of slop. Single action. All the way out. Lots and lots of slop. Break. So it's just a night and day different gun in terms of how it feels with our race gun here. That said, it still has the same operating system, which is very, very proven. One of the most reliable systems out there on the market. 226 for sure you guys can look up the DOD studies on it and uh, all of these 226s are going to have the same function and same action which is again very very 
very prudent. With the up-close portion of the video out of the way, a few things to discuss here before we close it out. Number one is going to be, of course, Sig Sauer did send this out to me for the review, full disclosure on that. Uh, reliability, we did have issues with this pistol, unfortunately. And I actually know a lot of people with this gun personally. And of all the people I know with it, which there's at least four or five that I know, Guys have high, high round counts with zero malfunctions of any kind. Unfortunately, we didn't have that. And we had one problem with this gun, and it was uh, failure to fire. So basically, we press the trigger and no bang. It hit the primer. I don't know. It didn't go off. Initially, I thought it might be an ammo thing, and of course, the vast majority of rounds through this gun are going to be minute man munitions, 124 and 115 grain. So I was thinking maybe it's just a bad patch of primers, whatever the case may be. Swapped over to Remington, ran about 500 rounds through it, had the same issues. Swapped over to some CCI, had the same issues. So at that point, I contacted SIG, let them know the issues, and uh, set the gun back in for repair. They did send the gun back, obviously, because I'm standing here with it, and uh, they said they could not replicate the issue. And uh, out of probably 2,000 rounds with, again, three different types of ammunition, I had it at least five times that I can think of, maybe more. I just, uh, if we can, we'll roll in footage of it here that you guys can see. And the only thing I could think of is that maybe there was something in the firing pin channel. I did not pull it out. What I wanted to do, instead of like gunsmithing it myself, which obviously I could do, was just go through the, the typical customer process, if you will, work with SIG's customer service, and just kind of see how that was. So without question, SIG's customer service, awesome. I didn't say who I was. I didn't say it was a teeny gun. I didn't say anything like that. I went through the normal customer service. They paid shipping both ways. And uh, again, since it's been back, I have about 800 rounds through it. Zero malfunctions of any kind. First shot since coming back from SIG with the Minuteman munitions. We'll see how she does. That's good. Got it loaded with some 115 grain XTP AAC ammo loaded. And uh, we'll see how it does with the hollow points. Can't do better than that. So that kind of leads me to say, to think rather that there probably was just something in the firing pin channel. And uh, they did say they did a complete disassembly of the firearm, reassembled it again, could not, couldn't duplicate the issues I was having. So uh, unfortunately, I wish I could always bring you guys the best news, especially, you know, with a gun that is so cool like this, which this one absolutely is, but we just report what happens here on the channel. And again, I'm the, of all the people I know that have this gun, the only person that had issues, of course, the one that's on video, right? Um, but there is that. Price point on this gun is actually a pro and a con. So compared to the German versions of this gun, it's super cheap <laughs> compared to other versions of the 226. It's very expensive. The X5, like I said, is a full custom shop gun. So this gun is worked on by world-class gunsmiths uh, as it comes uh, out of the box here. And right now, the cheapest I could find it looking around online was $2,200. I believe the MSRP is $2,800. Um, so it is absolutely not cheap for sure. Um, but I do believe it's a simply a fine firearm. It just could be that again something happened to my gun and something just again my best guess is something got in the firing pin channel um, but again as we since we've had it back rather 800 rounds no problems and i will be shooting this going forward without question um, because i do really like it the firearm tracks extremely well like i said when you just pick it up the gun feels fast i don't know how to explain that through a camera besides saying that but it does it presents very naturally it stays on target very naturally especially for a gun with the bore axis that this has i have a number of race guns and this one is absolutely as fast as any of them that I have so far, which is not really what you think of when you think of 226s. You don't really think of speed, but this gun can hang with any of them. Um, so with that, I think we'll 
end the video there. If you guys have any questions, you can post down below in the comment section as always. Uh, the best place to find me though, if we're gonna have updates or anything like that, is across my various social media sites that you guys see here. Any kind of updates, things like that, uh, we will post them on my social media first. And uh, again, if you guys like this channel and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We put up two to four videos a week here on the channel. If you're not seeing two to four videos a week, sign up for my email list at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's uh, email went out. So that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. Additionally, for deals, should this thing go on sale, any of the mags go on sale, Mechdar mags are fantastic. Uh, and I should mention, it works with any 226 mags. Um, but should any of the mags, the ammo, the optics, etc., go on sale, it will go out in my daily deals email. That email contains six to eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. So if it's in that email, it's the cheapest that I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day. Additionally, it contains a meme which a lot of people like. And I know there's a lot of people that follow the email just for the good meme. They're pretty savage. Um, <laughs> contains a meme that goes out every day. And uh, with that, guys, we'll close it out. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. Wouldn't be able to do this without each and every one of you. And I am eternally grateful. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.